Louise Bedford here with your Mind Over Market segment and of course my sometimes co-host, mostly co-host, Jordan Meller. How are you, Jordan? I'm well, Louise. Excited for another episode. <laughs> Fantastic. Look, I've got to tell you, we have had some beautiful feedback about our morning journal. I'm going to read out the feedback and then we'll talk a little bit about the morning journal before we go on to today's topic. Now, this was from a watcher of the show. My morning journal has become my evening journal. It's the last thing I do before bed. I opened my journal and started writing away. Once I'd finished I started rereading what I'd written. That's not something I usually do until days or weeks later. And to my amazement, realized that I'd reached the point of a definite decision. That point where that last little hint of doubt is gone. I now know I'll be a highly profitable trader and now it's written in stone. I must say I found it to be an amazing and at the same time quite a humbling experience as well as testament to the power of keeping a journal. Isn't that lovely? Wow. Jordan, we are making a difference not only for people's trading results but also for their life. So that is fantastic. Now, just to recap on a morning journal, Jordan, I know this might have been a new concept and a new phenomenon for you when we started talking about it, but the idea is that you write down your thoughts, you just keep on writing and writing and writing, and you don't let the pen stop moving. You pour down everything. This is different from a trading journal. You pour down everything in your heart, whatever is a boring list inside your head that needs to be expressed bells, anything that's taking up real estate in your psyche gets put down on paper. Now you can leave it there. I've got books behind me that show that I've been doing this for the last 25 years, 30 years. You can do that or you can even have a ceremonial burning which is also therapeutic. So Jordan, I know that you've heard from some of your other traders about morning journals. What are some of the things that people have been saying? Uh, I, I actually did this for myself for a little bit. I didn't uh, I didn't continue it. I apologize, Louise, but uh, I did. And uh, the the thing that that I've heard the most and recognized the most when I was doing it was the repetition of certain subjects uh, that you kind of look over the journal over the past three weeks and you can see almost every day or every second day you're touching on a certain subject with the same kind of mindset on that subject over and over and over. And it can either highlight something you really like or something you really don't like. Uh, and it can really cement that maybe it's time to change, uh, time to change something. And that's what I found. Uh, that's what I found interesting about that. Yes. Actually, the other thing that is interesting about that, as well as the themes, it's the things that you're envious of. So what I've found with my own journaling is if I'm fixated on, I wish I had this result, I wish I'd done that, I wish I'd traveled here, that gives me a very strong clue about what my next goal should be and how can I scaffold my way into achieving that thing that I'm envious about. Even if you're envious about somebody or something that they have achieved, that can actually really assist you because all of a sudden it's in black and white. It's on paper in front of you. Now, you can use this as a bit of a to-do list, or I call mine my ta-da list <laughs> because it sounds more dramatic. There's no doubt that even checking things off can help. Popping it all down on paper can definitely bring you face to face with some of the issues that you're facing. I just love that you didn't continue, Jordan, because it means that I can badge you about something time and time again. I can say, Jordan, how's your journal going? I wonder if Rich decided to continue. This is a call out to Rich. Rich, tell me whether you continued writing in your journal. I know you did it for the first seven days. Let's see how you go as time ticks on and you run out of things to write about because that's when the gold comes out. You know, I have to uh, keep us all accountable, don't you, Jordan? Yeah, yeah, it's your job. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now I am going to respond to a listener question. Here is the question that I got via email to louise at tradingsecrets.com.au. I had a loss that hit me in the guts. The next time I sat down to trade, I freaked out. I had a full on panic attack. 
that was a month ago. And every time I open the dealer's platform, I hyperventilate. What's happening and what can I do about it? Oof, that's a big one, isn't it, Jordan? Yes. Now, we have got a very physical reaction being displayed here. It is something that you can feel in your body. I'm going to call it a trading panic attack. It is shortness of breath. It is feeling constricted. It is intense anxiety and it can cause physical sensations of fear, racing heartbeat, shortness of breath, dizziness, trembling and muscle tension. Oof. Now that's a big one because now it's not just from the psyche. This is physically affecting somebody. There is a study done in London called Interception. It was an interception study, whereas if you're very aware of your own bodily sensations, you are actually a better trader. I hear what that study is saying, but taken to the extreme, this is where our physical sensations can impact our own trading behaviour. Jordan, what are some of the things you feel physically when you're trading and things aren't going well or things are going very, very well because it's in the extremes usually that it hits? What do you yeah, feel I in can, your body? Um, I, I can relate to, to this statement. Uh, my mm. biggest ever loss, um, I went through very similar things and I felt it in my body, uh, definitely. Uh, I was pacing pacing around the room uh it was all it was it was strange it was your stomach drops but it it's there's almost an essence of anger uh you know you know sometimes when you get really angry that you get the shake so you get the like like you're really seeing red it was similar to that um and yeah no i felt that i didn't trade for, for it took me three weeks before i could even look at a chart again so um i've i've sat in the same boat as as what this uh what this listener's uh sending in so uh i i relate with the with the physical exhaustion that comes with, and it is i didn't want to get out of bed for like three days i was exhausted and uh, everything you feel physically it's numbers on a screen it shouldn't affect you physically but it does Oh, it does. It absolutely does. There's a few things in what you've said there that I think it's really interesting. The concept of seeing red. Now, mm. that I can see in my daughter who played a game of football recently. She turned into a completely different person. <laughs> she just, wow, there was a slight difference between her and the animal world, but it was only just slight. <laughs> It was interesting to see because I can hear what you're saying. It's almost like we go into that limbic overdrive where at the outside of our brain is our prefrontal cortex, especially at the front, and the cerebral cortex, which goes all around. That's the more mature, the most recent addition to our brain. But as we go back into the middle of our brain, there's the limbic system, and that's the lizard brain that keeps us alive. Yeah. That is where the seeing red comes from. And the physical exhaustion is such a concept here. I want to talk about some of the things that we can do to prevent getting to that state because once you're in that state it's very hard to bring it back so i'm going to talk about some of the things that we can do if we are in that state but also some of the things that we can do to prevent that state and the main idea behind these concepts is grounding techniques it's almost like when you are in that seeing red state that you are no longer in control of your body your body has a mind of its own that parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and you are behaving as if you were about to be hunted by a saber-toothed tiger it's primitive mm -hmm. it's an ordeal and it is only designed to be from a human perspective a quick spurt of energy it is not designed to happen to you every day because we wear down 
We have cortisol that builds up, adrenaline that surges. That heightened level can lead to awful health conditions. So let's see what we can do when we feel that slight onset, just the beginning of that, which is where the interoception comes in. If you can feel it starting to happen, I have some techniques. The first one is called box breathing. Now, box breathing, this is this is an interesting one. It's one that we can do right now, Jordan, and I'm going to show you the technique and we're going to do it together. Now, yep. this is something that is a yoga technique and it is clinically proven to help when you are starting to feel the onset of a panic attack. Now, imagine a box. OK, so we've got the side, the top, the other side and the bottom. All right. What we're going to do and I'm going to show you with my finger how this actually follows through. So if you're looking along, please do this with Jordan and I. We're going to take a deep breath in and then we're going to trace the box. OK, so I'll talk you through it. So we're going to breathe in. And then we're going to slowly breathe out. And then we're going to breathe in. And then we're going to slowly breathe out. Okay, so it's like a rectangular box where the breathe in is shorter than the breathe out. All right, so Jordan, are you willing to have a shot? Let's All do right. It. So, Jordan, for me, breathe in. And imagine a box where you're going to breathe out slowly, and that's tracing the top of the box slowly, slowly. And then breathe in. And then trace the bottom of the box in your mind's eye, slowly, slowly with your breath. Now, if you do three boxes for me while I'm talking, Jordan, and I want you to be aware of your physical sensations, continue on with that box. So you're breathing in and then out slowly, in and then out slowly to complete the box. Once you've done three, let me know and then we'll talk about your reactions. Now, for everybody listening, I want you to do the same. Trace that box in your mind, breathe in and then out slowly, in and then out slowly. Now, have you completed three boxes there, Jordan? Just about. Just finished. Beautiful. Okay. What do you feel in your body? Uh, my shoulders have relaxed. Uh, I subconsciously, my hands are crossed in my lap. I'm in a very relaxed position right now. How long do you think it took you to complete the three breaths? About 30, 30 seconds, if that. Would it be a potential activity that you could do before you begin to trade? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I have a dare. I have a challenge. Everybody watching, before you begin to trade, try three box breaths, just three, 30 seconds. Feel that relaxation and you know what's happening on the inside? It's clarity. All of a sudden, that threat response, the threat response of the computer, the threat response of the trade lessens. You, when you are running from a saber-toothed tiger, cannot box breathe, you cannot. So this tricks your body into a situation where you're clearer, but also for your longevity, for your future health, you are dissipating stress in one of the quickest techniques known to man. So that is definitely one to try. I've got another one for you, Jordan, and we're going to do this right now. What mm -hmm. we do is a countdown backward. And this is a grounding technique designed to get you to notice what's happening around you. So I'm going to see if we can do this on the spot, Jordan, because I do like putting yep. you on the spot. Name five right. things that you can see. Name them for me. What do you see uh, around you? Coffee mug, keyboard, laptop, monitor stand, uh, lighting. Fantastic. What are four things that you can hear? Your voice, uh, a neighbor's lawnmower, my dog and the wind. Ooh, you're fast. What are three things that you can feel? My hands, my desk, and my chair. 
two things that you can smell. This is getting a bit harder now, but give it a go. My coffee. My deodorant. And one thing that you can taste. My coffee. <laughs> So what this does, this grounding technique, sometimes it's called the senses exercise. Sometimes it's called the five, four, three, two, one, which is a bit harder to say, but it's a countdown to something that is the most difficult sense for the most of us is taste. So it's a funneling technique. You start broad and you gradually funnel down to the most difficult to interpret sense that funneling technique hones your mind brings you to a focal point of clarity and allows you to feel at one with the environment again now have you done this type of thing before jordan with this census technique i haven't that's uh that's the first time i've ever done it and i'm writing it down because i think yeah. it could be a fantastic thing that all traders do prior to our live trading rooms uh, oh, and we could have yes. everyone together do that exercise. Uh, so I'm writing that down because I think that's something we could implement for all traders to do together uh, as a community as well. I love that because what we're trying to do with staving off a panic attack, which I know is the question that we're handling here, but staving off a panic attack, we're trying to get you more in touch with your body sensations that are not disturbing sensations. So we're breaking that link between I'm feeling my heart rate and that's making me feel anxious to something that is smoother, calmer and more aware and I do feel that some of these things can really help our children as well. So if you've got a child that is freaking out, that is something that you can actually use. I've done this with my own children. Now I've got an extra technique for you, which is the hand on heart technique, as well as, and this, I think they accomplish the same thing because you're getting back to a feeling, a sensate, a tracing hand technique. Now, the hand on heart, Jordan, you may remember in a previous episode, I got you to give yourself a hug. So do mm -hmm. that for me right now. So touch your heart, give yourself a little hug, feel the warmth of your hands on your chest, feel the pressure on your chest from your hands. It's so fast, isn't it? It's so fast. See, our brain cannot distinguish between ourselves doing that and somebody else doing that. It's the quickest way to release oxytocin. You can do it in a couple of seconds and it's almost instantaneous. So that is a good one, especially if you're struggling in public. Some of these situations, box breathing you can do. Definitely you can do the sensation technique, but some of the other things that people often suggest for a panic attack, it's difficult because you have to make a weird noise or some sort of obvious change of facial expression. And I'm not a fan of those as much because you can't help yourself if you're in front of somebody. Yeah. I'm much more of a fan of something like this because I can say, oh, Jordan, it's so great to see you. Instantly, I can boost my own mood. So yeah. I've got another one for you. And this is also, it, it's a, you're going to have to take a little bit of a leap with me, but it's designed okay. to get sensation, sensation going. Now, our hand here is something that we can use to trace. Now, you can see that I'm moving my fork finger across each of my fingers and I'm going to get to my little finger. All right. And then I'm going to go back. So I'm tracing each of my fingers. All right. Now, the idea with this is that when you stop tracing your fingers, Jordan, what do you feel in your hand? What can you feel in your hand? Can you feel that it's a little bit tingly? Can you feel that you've kind of given your hand a bit of a tickle? So yeah. just touch and then stop. Okay, great. Now, this is a terrific one for a child before an exam or yourself before an exam, depending on what sort of exam and what sort of time frame you're looking at. But we're designed to respond to touch and we're designed to respond to rhythm. Now, if you can time it with your breath, 
So I'm going to give you a challenge, Jordan. I want you to take in a deep breath. I'm going to describe it first and then you're going to do it. I want you to yeah. take in a deep breath and then I'm looking for you to exhale but finish exhaling by the time you get to your little finger. Okay, so take in a deep breath, Jordan. And trace now and exhale very slowly, very, very, very slowly. Now you may have to speed up your tracing if your breath isn't quite matching and that's okay, but you're exhaling and you've finished the trace, you've finished your breath. Did you manage to get the breath to coincide? Uh, to be honest, I, I had a lot of breath left in me by the time I got there. So I think I need to so trace, trace faster. Off. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it. You've got to get your timing. Yeah. yeah, your timing between the two. Right. Try so again. that's your game. That's your goal. I'm gamifying something for you. I'm giving you something that's a little bit fun and a little bit of a personal challenge. Okay. But some people really respond to that gamification because it gets your mind out of stress and into fun. So it's a challenge, it combines breathing, it combines sensation, and it's something that I've done even with a stranger on the street who is having a panic attack. This particular technique is incredibly effective if you're in the throes of it. So you are trying to match your breathing to your sensation and it gives you grounding on two fronts. When you're in the middle of a panic attack, that senses exercise won't work often because you are in your own head and you can't think and you can't even remember what am I supposed to do I'm supposed to give more of what it's too much whereas this is something that is just on the end of your arm you can do it yourself you can time your breath to match so I do think that that is something that can really help Jordan have you ever seen anything like that before I'm guessing no because this is um it's a it's a bit of a no, weird I'm, one yeah you can see I'm, I'm just yeah <laughs> I'm enjoying yeah, myself yeah. yeah no no I have not yeah I'm trying to give a variety of techniques so that as a listener of this show, you can experiment. That is the best way to find out what mm. suits you. Experiment by trying everything that we're saying because you might strike gold. One thing will resonate more with you than another and that's okay. You can choose your own way and you can choose your own path. It's your own personal agency. Now let's look at maintenance next. So this is if you are aware that this can be an issue, but you're trying to find things to prevent it happening down the track. And I'm going to give you a big long list and we're going to talk about two or three at a time. Firstly, progressive muscle relaxation, mindfulness meditation, and visualization. We're going to discuss those three. So progressive muscle relaxation is where you tense yourself and then you relax and you draw a comparison between that very tense state and that relaxed state. Now people do it to get to sleep. They do it before they talk on stage. They do it before they chat up that gorgeous thing over there in the corner. They do it to actually draw attention to how they want to be that they're moving into a more relaxed state and that comparison between tension and relaxation can really help some people. Mindfulness meditation is where we use our breath, but we're using this in a particular way that we're not detailing every little component of our trading behavior. We're looking at it as something that we can control our breathing. You can control that exhale. So we're not picking apart our trading at this point. I don't want that kind of mindfulness. I want it to be on breath and things that you are within your own rights to enjoy as a, as a human, your senses. And the last one, visualization, imagining where you want to be, imagining that perfect trader that you want to be. So Jordan, your thoughts on those first three for maintenance? Like it. I haven't heard of the, the tense one before. Uh, mm. that, that's a new one for me. So I, I like the concept. Uh, I'm going to have to give that a go. Uh, prevention's proven uh, over a number of different things. The best way to treat something, right, is to prevent it from happening. So anything you can do, little bits in the routine to add to that to stop and, and a few of the things that you've already mentioned on the list up and coming as well, uh, I think are, are things we need to implement. Yeah, nice. Let's look at the other three and then I'm going to cover the last one last. So exercise, cognitive behavioral techniques and sleep and stress management. So exercise. Now, 
Jeremy Newsom, who's been on the show, what a superstar he is. I remember one time he told me that when he makes a trading error and he's trying to discipline himself, he exercises it out. He goes to the gym and he, he works out until he pukes. That's what he said. Okay. I'm not saying you have to, but for Jeremy, that works. <laughs> Right. So he exercises all of the bad juju out. I do the same. I find exercise to be an amazing thing. I tend to go to the gym five times a week and it is such a great leveler because when you are in the middle of a lift, you cannot be thinking about the trading screen. You have to be fully focused on every absolute muscle that is supposed to be coordinating so that you don't end up hurting yourself it is such a way to hone the mind exercise is fantastic cognitive behavioral techniques are where you are wondering to yourself or perhaps with a partner or a therapist is what you are talking about logical you are challenging your own beliefs i'll give you an example i am always such a failure so we have got something that is very pervasive. It's going on into the future. We've got a very negative outcome and something that doesn't seem like it will ever change. So is it true? Is that true that I'm always such a failure? Could there be at some stage in my life, a slight win, a slight win, something that I've done right? Start criticizing yourself about the premise for your beliefs. That's what cognitive behavioral therapy is about. And the last one is sleep and stress management, which we have covered a bit on the show as well. So Jordan, your thoughts on those three things, exercise, CBT and sleep. Exercise by far the best thing. Um, in my opinion, just personal opinion out of a lot of those exercise, it does wonders. You just, you don't think it would, but it would. The positive endorphins kick in. It really does do wonders with motivation and everything along those lines. Half of our Trade Delicious team has somehow ended up being fighters. <laughs> They're MMA and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters. But same thing, they spend hours in that gym. You you can't spend time thinking about the charts. You can't spend time thinking about work. You have to focus on that and you're moving your body. You're sweating. It's hard work. You come out feeling uh, feeling good. You come out feeling rewarded. That instant gratification of that hard work, the positive endor endorphins kick in and then you see the charts with more clarity. So, yeah, exercise through and through. Yes, yes, it's a winner, isn't it? I think that everybody can find something that they can use in this realm even if it's something great. as simple as clenching your feet. So one of the people that I've trained in the markets, I train at quite a few disabled people and I do find it a beautiful challenge to work with their occupational therapist. So I've got one gentleman that I'm working with who has mirror syndrome, which means that he can't move one side of his body without the other side. Hmm. So if you think about it, he can stand up, but he can't walk. It's, it's devastating. Oh, yeah. So before he trades, I've suggested that he clenches his toes, clenches his toes, release, clinch, release. That is his routine. So he can't do it individually, but he's working up to it. It's a, it's, you can find exercise in some way. Now, the final thing that I wanted to discuss today is seeking support. Now, here's the list for maintenance. This is nowhere near a comprehensive list for avoiding a panic attack. But the major thing that we need to do is to make sure that we reach out if we need help. With all of these things that we are discussing on the show, for some of us, it won't even be a problem. It won't be a trigger at all. But as a few of us, it will be. There'll be something that Jordan and I have said, some little thing that's tricked off in your mind where you've gone, uh-oh, I'm in trouble because it reminds mm. you of past times. It can be like a trading PTSD, but it can be that your personal life actually has an impact with this and it can influence you not only in your trading, but also as a person. Seek support of 
fellow traders, reach out if you're having trouble. Send me an email because I would love to cover some of the things that you can do on this show to help not just you, but the wider environment, the wider community. This is something that Jordan and I feel very strongly about. And if you are still struggling, please do find a good therapist in your area. If you can see them face to face, that's great. But if not, you can do something that's online. It's very little difference between online and face to face. It's a personal preference thing, but it is up to you to make sure you're looking after yourself. Nobody is going to say, okay, it's time that you went to therapy in general circumstances, unless mm. things are totally extreme. It's up to you to work out that this is something that I can be helped by. Jordan, I know that you feel strongly about that as well. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just going to leave it with this note as well. This is a message to all the blokes. Uh, it's not weak. It's not weak to ask for help. Uh, I know we're in an ego driven world. Uh, we're in a world where we, we can be a, and I'm really talking to the men here. You can be a man and provide, provide your own income and, and be a trader. And it's awesome. Uh, if you really want to be a trader, you're not going to do it alone. Uh, and you're going to run into whether you hit some of these things we've touched on already or whether they're in the future, you're going to need to be prepared. And uh, asking for help isn't weak. It's actually improvement, uh, substantial improvement. You can see the difference between the people who have that help and the people who don't. Uh, so don't think it's a matter of weakness. If something we've said has resonated, ask, right? Learn, grow and, uh, and incorporate. So uh, don't see it as a moment of weakness. It's not. Jordan, you are a brilliant co-host. I couldn't have said that better myself. Join us next week for Mind Over Markets. Cheers.